The Line 6 Helix Floor has various inputs and outputs with many routing capabilities. There is a guitar input with switchable pad and selectable impedance, an auxiliary input for active pickups, an XLR input for a microphone, quarter inch sends and returns that may be used as instrument or line level inputs and outputs, XLR outputs, another pair of quarter inch outputs, a stereo quarter inch headphone output, input for Variax guitars, MIDI, digital connections, and your power. On the screen, our input blocks are on the left. The line represents our signal path, and our output blocks are on the right. Path 2's input block has an X through it, indicating no input. Path 1's input block is set to multi. Here, you can select the input you want to process. To the right are the output blocks. This one is set to multi, sending its signal to the quarter inch, XLR, and digital outputs all at once. There is a pan parameter that comes into play when using stereo outputs, and a level parameter. Send and return blocks can be inserted anywhere in the signal path and can come in handy when complex routing is needed. Menu, global settings, Ins and Outs has some settings you should check out. Page one has the guitar pad, phantom power that should be turned on after a mic is inserted and turned off before you remove the mic. Mic gain from the physical mic pre and low cut and USB input options. Page two has level settings for all of the quarter inch and XLR outputs and should be set according to what you will be plugging into them. For the most part, guitars, basses, amps, and pedals should equal instrument level. Whereas keyboards, other modelers, phones, and other media players send out line level. A mic preamp on a mixer generally wants to see mic level from an XLR cable. On page three, Next to the reamping options is an option for what the big knob controls. Leaving it on multi controls the XLR, quarter inch, and digital output levels. Setting it to control a specific output leaves the unaffected outputs at 100%. This comes in handy when you only want to control what you hear in your stage monitor while leaving the front of house feed unaffected. Headphone monitor option comes in handy when you only want to monitor what comes out of a specific output. Digital output options spill over onto page four. Let's route some inputs to some outputs using some real world examples we might use. Let's say I have a guitar plugged into my guitar input. I'll select guitar on the input block. Give myself an amp. Give myself a cab. I'll throw on some reverb too. I want this to go out of my left XLR output to my full range monitor, so I'll select the XLR outputs, pan them left, and make sure they're set to line level in the global setting. Now I want my mic signal to be processed. Every path can be split into a parallel path and routed however you'd like. You'll just need to drag any old block down to create the split. I'll pick an EQ because chances are I'll be using one for vocals. I want this to go out of the other XLR output because it's a balanced signal which reduces noise 
to the mixer at front of house. So I'll select that. On second thought, since I like this reverb so much, I'll merge path 1B with path 1A before the reverb so they'll both be affected. To keep their outputs separated, I'll pan them at the merge mixer block that gets created. Now my bassist needs a path. She's connected via one of the returns. She needs an amp. a cab, and wants to send that sound to a DI box from the quarter inch outputs. She also wants to feed her bass cabinet on stage, so we'll drop a send block before the cab as to not send a cab into another cab. That can sound weird, or unique, or both. Paths 1 and 2 each have their own DSP chip, so path 1 can be fed into path 2 for a long chain of effects. If that's not enough for you, there's the option for Super Serial. Literally, the options could use their own video. I might just do that. If you want more examples of the craziness we can get ourselves into, let me know and we can go there. Thanks for watching.